Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to look in on my DIY stacked bin that is made out of three 10 gallon or 38 liter ish totes uh, that I made a couple of years ago. So the plan today is that we are going to evaluate the system and then we are going to take care of it for my vacation. So when you go on vacation, what do you do with your worms? Go ahead and leave that in the comments below. Um, how do you deal with uh, when you're going to be gone for an extended period of time or a vacation? All right, let's start taking a look here. Looks like they've been on the bubble wrap a little bit. I'll put uh, pictures below uh, for the rest of, you know, looking at things and seeing, you know, how did they look the last time we looked in on them. It's been about three or four weeks now and they have made some amazing castings. Look at that. Isn't that nuts? Because I actually took the um, some of the paper and put it down below and we did feed these guys and I'll put a picture of what we fed them on this level last time. But uh, this looks done. Put in the comments below. What do you think? Does this look done or is it just me? Wow. The increase in the temperature, it's like 72 degrees Fahrenheit in here. And I will, I'm seeing lots of cocoons too. Like three of them right here. I don't know if you can see those really well. All different sizes of cocoons. The one that's amber color is probably closer to being ready to hatch than this kind of almost greenish yellow one. But there are all kinds of them. And then here's a couple of them. One's almost done and one's just probably been hatched. Uh, looking into my research, it looks like the better, the bigger the worm, the bigger the egg, and I guess that makes sense. I don't know if people who have chickens find that to be true, um, but at least it holds true for worms. Lots and lots and lots of cocoons in here. I'm going to start collecting up the, um, the food that's long-term food so that we can put it in the bottom layer because that's started to be what I do now is that I take all the food that's going to take forever to uh, finish up and then we put that in the far bottom so you know it has the ideal moisture and whatnot to finish things up so I think I've got some possibly some mango pit leftovers here uh, so we're just going to take a good look at this and get it ready for vacation but it looks like these guys will probably be ready for a harvest by the time I get back. So the moisture's still, this is wet. I mean, we took a lot of this bedding from the, the layer below in hopes of making that layer a little bit drier. And then I don't know what it's doing quite yet, but uh, it is in fact uh, very, very wet here. Now we had talked previously about the worms that are um, really dark black cherry in color. And I'm looking at this one and it's the same size as most of my other stuff. And I think it was Michael who said he thought this might be a rubellus. Let me know if you have any experience with them. I'll grab up a normal red wiggler. Um, so look at that, look how dark that is. I don't see a clitellum on it, but you know, that doesn't mean anything. It could just be an immature worm. Um, it's not acting real flighty like a blue worm would. So if you have any experience with these, uh, like what did, I think they were called rebellious worms, let me know. Um, it's an Uncle Jim's mix. So I think all bets are off as to what is in there. And that's fine, because as you can see, they have done a fabulous job on this. And uh, looks like they're getting into the seed here. Just trying to make sure that I get all the old food, but you know what we're not finding so far? Is those uh, leeks. Those leeks had been in there for four months and they didn't show a lot of uh, sign of being eaten up. And currently I'm seeing like a little leaf of something unidentifiable. But I'm not seeing the leaks anywhere, so maybe that was just the tipping point with the leaks. Maybe five months or four and a half months is what it takes to do and get rid of leaks. So we fed pumpkin last time, and I think that is the stem of the pumpkin, and there's no sign of the pumpkin at all. I 
think that's a sticker. Yep. Okay, so I think we've picked all of the stuff out of here now. If I find anything later, I'll keep that to the side as well. But let's look and see what the next layer down is doing. Okay, so we also have, again, pretty wet castings here, and this appears to be a shell of some sort. Not really sure. Looks kind of like avocado, but it's hard to tell. See, the onion that was growing last time has made us a nice little worm ball. Look at that. Forbidden foods indeed. They're living in the onion. And I do have some potworms here. If anybody who has not seen potworms before, they're right here next to my thumb. Uh, from what I understand, they're related to regular worms. They're just, uh, they're just another helper in the bin. And I do have some springtails in here, and I have a cocoon on my finger. But that's how you can tell the difference between a baby worm, a compost worm, and a pot worm. You can see right there on my thumbnail, if I can hold still for that long, that they are snow white, they are not pinky, whereas the, the baby worms actually have that pink color to them. So, kind of going through here a little bit. And I think they were given pumpkin as well. Looks like they've gotten into this seed. But it looks like I'm going to have to uh, up their game with feeding them again. Uh, isn't that crazy? Every time I come in here, I think, uh, I hope I haven't overfed them. And uh, when push comes to shove, they've eaten everything again. But this is kind of getting muddy. So we might be looking at harvesting this in about a month. But I'm going to have to start making... Uh, plans to dry this out or start migrating them to one side or the other. This is, you know, considerably more done than it was the time before. And I just really don't know what that is. But it seems like I've got quite a bit of it. It's weird. It's kind of got a shell. And I don't know if this is the pumpkin or what, but looking at what we've got left here, it looks like we just have hard, crunchy stuff uh, that is food, anyway. And gathering that all together so we can put that on the bottom row. So what I'm doing here today is doing a really good evaluation of the bin here. And then we are going to feed it up uh, so that they will not go without while I am gone on vacation. Okay, let's look at the bottom row. Okay, so we're still seeing worms down here. I think this is the newest of the layers. I'll put that below when we when we looked at that last or when we started the bedding. I think it was only a couple months ago, so you can see that the bedding is still here. Um, but they're making progress on their on their hard hard to eat foods. Lots of worms down here. I think they have to come down here as baby worms because the holes are only 1 16th of an inch. And I think the regular big worms wouldn't be able to get through that. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think a full grown worm can get through a 1.5 millimeter hole to get down here? Or do you think these guys started out as um, baby worms? My guess is babies, but not all worms are as big as the others, so might not be. So this is my collection of long-term foods that's going to stay down here. I'll just cover that up. The uh, grape stems are a little bit woody, so you know you can expect them to take almost a year to finish up. All right, let's reassemble them and start getting together all of the food for vacation. Okay, so here we are on the second level, and we're just going to feed it the opposite side over here, and let me get their stuff together.
Okay, so here's my plan. I'm going to take this shipping paper that I get that I normally shred and use for bedding, and I'm going to make kind of like food burritos for the worms. Okay, one thing that I do have is these big leaves. I'm not sure what they're called, I forget. If you remember what they're called, put that in the comments below. But we're gonna use paper and then these green things. And then let's get them some kitchen scraps in there so that they can have some food for while I'm gone. I've seen people do this burrito feeding before and it does seem to work. So we're just gonna put that there. I'm gonna get one more made. Okay, burrito number two. I know somebody was going to say with that first video, you're not making a very good burrito. Yeah, I'm not. I usually buy them. I don't make them. But let's uh, push this over here so that, you know, they get more real estate on there and we'll put the top layer on. And then we're going to alternate sides here and give them burritos for this side. This also might help with uh, the up and coming harvest of this bin so that it can start migrating possibly towards the burritos. player. What's funny is I usually use these leaves for making concrete pavers and water, um, little water fountains for inside my garden. Don't normally feed them to the worms, but uh, I think they will like it. Let me know what you think. What are they, you know, they should take a while to break down since I just picked them this morning. I would think that they would take at least a couple weeks. Oops. Gonna... All right, well. All right, guys. Well, if you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.